the hardest thing about doing life lessons is that I have to be 100% real about everything that I tell you. And the reason I mean, is... I can hear the comments now. 444, Jay-Z's 13th studio album. And this is supposed to be the greatest, most important album in hip-hop history? Yes. And I'm going to tell you why. As I go over a couple of tracks, I'm going to make you guys realize that Jay-Z's 444 was definitely one of the greatest albums in hip-hop history. And yes, I said it. Am I a big Jay-Z fan? Of course I am. What inspired me to do this video is I am part of a Jay-Z group on Facebook. I will leave links down below if you are a big Jay-Z fan. But the problem that I really had is we were ranking a, you know, Jay-Z's best albums. And one guy, which I will not mention his name because to me, you will get no recognition. He literally put 444 is trash. To take a man's work and we get a glimpse of perhaps Jay-Z's most vulnerable points in life the biggest thing that you can do when somebody opens up to you is reject them. We just need to realize that 10, 20 years from now, we will look back on this album and realize therapy is actually cleansing to the soul. At the end of the day, we're all like made of the things that are really important. Right. The things like, who, you know, again, what are your values? What are your goals? Your integrity, who you are as a person. You keep your word. People know, like, man, when that man gives his word, he gonna come through. Makes you think, makes you think what's the channel about? What's this really about? It's about teaching life lessons, teaching the youth. It's about top fives, movie reviews. That's what makes you who you are, makes you what you are. There's no rules in this game. There's no parameters. Just truth. So, two, three weeks from now, you're gonna wish you subscribed. Two, three weeks from now, you're gonna be looking for movie AV Impulse. Okay, I'm reloaded, let's go! In the first track, Kill Jay-Z, it is important in that track because he has to kill the alter ego. When you have kids, when you have a daughter or a son or stepkids or anything like that, you have to set aside your ego, your everything, in order to make your children successful. Now, you are not a father, and this is going to be very controversial, but if you only pay child support, but you do not look after the kid, pick up the kid, leave him sitting there on the front porch, or any of that, you are not a father. Message. A father, no matter what the situation is with their, you know, baby mother or their significant other, whether it's good or it's bad, that should not interrupt what you are or what you can do as a father. In that song, Jay had to kill off his ego. He just literally says, fuck Jay-Z. And he has to let go of all of that you know you shot your own brother how do we know that we could trust jay-z you know and then he says it he had a daughter and he had to get softer there's no way around it when you have kids you can't do the same lifestyle that you were doing back then you don't need an alibi so you know when you drop out of school you lose your principles all these are key jewels that should definitely be picked up. And while you may not appreciate it now, years down the road, you will come back to albums like this and just be like, wow, I was really naive back then thinking that this wasn't an important album. When you kill your ultra ego, you are stepping into a different lane because no matter what, when you have kids, and a wife and a family, you have to change. And that is bottom line. The next song I really wanted to get into is Smile. And for me, this really, really hit home. And I'm going to tell you 
why is because first off what he said you know people will rip their stuff off a title just to spite you you know what did I do and it's it's so true because the second you know Jay-Z has done a lot in the shadows that we probably don't even know about but yet what we will do is the second we don't like a song or a statement or an interview that he does and he says something that you don't like, like everybody made this huge controversy about how he won't give his cousin $5,000 to start a business. But if you really listen to that interview that he did with Kevin Hart, it's not the fact that he was saying that he wouldn't give him the money. It's just that, you know, because you have money and you try to help people after a certain period, you have to stop helping. People think that they could just get $5,000 and start a business and be successful and it doesn't work like that. And then with Smile, his mom says this beautiful poem right at the end, which a lot of people for some reason had the nerve to disrespect and say that it shouldn't have even been on the album. First of all, it was a beautiful poem. Secondly, I have a lot of friends. I know a lot of people. And I also have family members who I won't say who are gay. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you love somebody of the same sex, there is nothing wrong with that. You are who you are. It's just one of those songs that really hits you home, especially if you actually know somebody that is in that community. And trust me, that is something that no matter who you love, nobody should judge that. That's you. The other song is definitely, for me, uh, that really hit is 444. And while I never cheated on my wife, never thought about it, and it's just because me and my wife have a beautiful marriage. But for a man to open up, especially with therapy, in the culture of the, you know, black community, the Spanish community, Colombian community. I mean, just male in general, we all look at therapy as this poison, as this thing that isn't going to help. And personally, it really does. And while therapy doesn't always have to go into the direction of you know, you going so far deep into your childhood that, you know, you start busting down, but you in therapy, their job, even in a way they will kind of manipulate you, but it's not always about digging into your past. It's about being upfront and being real. We all went crazy when we saw the elevator accident and we all wanted to know what it was about. And when he finally exposes it and finally talks about it and Beyonce talks about it, because they're celebrities, it was this big deal. But if the average person, you know, like me, you know, like me or you, if we went out and cheated on our significant other, which I would no way, shape or form condone because I watch my parents do it back and forth to each other all the time until they finally just called it quits. And, you know, that's when we moved back to the projects. And, you know, from there I did my dirt and did what I had to do to survive. And I've talked about it in a life lessons previously. The hardest thing about doing life lessons is that I have to be 100% real about everything that I tell you. And the reason is, is because I'm gonna have some hater somewhere that recognized me from the third grade or recognizes me from the streets and automatically gonna try to discredit me just to get a rise out of the comment section. And the greatest part about it all is nothing in those videos is fabricated. Back to 444, such beautiful chorus done by Hannah Williams. The sample is just absolutely amazing. What he said in that song is so true. If you cheat, you have to go home and look at your kids and look at your wife and, and just walk around with this secret all the time and I, I don't know how somebody's conscience just can't be eating away at them now the other track I want to get into is BAM because even though you push your alter ego or your ego to the side sometimes you got to remind these fools on who they effing with to me that track really meant a lot because and here's the life lesson 
also is the one thing that he says is, don't you ever forget, Jigga got the shit popping. I pulled out the pop when we was out of options. And for me, that really hit home because when I was on and I was doing my thing and I was making crazy money, I put people on. Now, granted, I wasn't pulling out pots, but I did have people bag up. I had runners. I did what I had to do. So the one thing that you can never say, you know, that anybody could ever say and ask about me, they will say, yeah, man, you know, Nick was that dude. He was generous. He would help you out if you needed it. Even when my peoples, my, my OGs, my best friends went to jail for something they did, came back out, no job would hire them. And when I went legit, any job I was at and one of my peoples needed a job, I got them the job. So for me, that shit hits hard because don't you ever forget, Nick got this shit popping. I pulled out the bags when y'all was out of options. Next one definitely is Moonlight. Moonlight to me is just what the rap is now. I mean, y'all are stuck in La La Land. Even when we win, we gonna lose. Y'all got the same fucking flows. I don't know who is who. I mean, he's absolutely right. Everybody's just trying to mimic everybody else's sound and everybody else's flow. And nobody wants to take the initiative to go on their own except for artists like Cole or Kendrick or Benny or uh, Westside Gunna, whole Griselda family. They're making a movement that you can stand behind. You know, the last one I say is the most important song on the album is Legacy. These are the reasons why I do these videos is because when I die, while my 12-year-old doesn't look at me as a famous YouTuber, he doesn't look at me, he won't watch my videos, except for the one that I had him in, but it's because I'm not like a Mr. Beast or anything like that. I'm just not his cup of tea. But when I die, these videos will be forever. And while I've tried to tell my son some of my past history and you know kind of like the roots of the man that he came from you know he just kind of brushes them off but I don't think YouTube will ever go anywhere per se I feel like these videos will forever stand the test of time so that when I leave I can leave a legacy behind for my kids this is not for anybody else and the same with my wife if I was to ever pass before my wife you know I know she would look back on these videos and just really embrace just seeing me again and while I think sometimes social media really destroys um, society in a way that we'll probably never get back it also helps with the memories because in some way, shape or form, they're always there. But this album is probably the closest that we will ever get to Jay-Z's actual, like real struggles. And just understand that he's human too. And while he may be a big billionaire celebrity, he still has feelings he still goes through emotional things. He still goes through arguments. And that's just something that in this album he releases. So for anybody to call it trash is just mind-blowing. Anyways, I love y'all. Peace. Check in on Wednesday. Top 5 music documentaries of 2023 that are on streaming services that you can watch right now. And you're going to get let in on a little secret. So shh, don't tell anybody that I'm going to tell you that secret. Anyways, see you Wednesday. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. You love me. You really love me. <laughs> you're not going anywhere.